阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Thank you, everyone. Today we will start a brand new part of section three, part fifteen. I should not put the tick there. Transgression easily committed in the family. So we are starting this new part today. This one should be more relevant to us, and it's also a very、um, topical part because everyone has a family, right? Everyone is closest unit you get to contact, your closest group of people. You know, you will get in contact very early on in your life. So something in here it would should be quite useful in our、um, cultivation to pay attention of. You know, this transgression we need to be、um, aware and、uh, avoid and improve ourselves against. So first one goes straight to greed. You know, the translation is there. Kind of,、um, I'm just gonna read in Chinese once, and then as usual in, in English, and then expand it. So the Chinese is called Tan Lan Wu Yan, Zhou Zhu Qiu Zhi. So first half says about greed without measures or endless greed, you know,、um, without needing to say that. And greed is a very big topic we have right now, and wow, there are many sides of this argument. So we to put in. Context: What do they try to say? Because this is about transgression committed among family members in the family. So from something broad to something as small as a family unit, right? We can look at how greed affects dynamics in the organization.、Um, so if we go literal, this one in the context of family, you know, those are、um, bad. Um, about those、um, attitude, you know, that represents greed in the context of family, is like the behavior. What do we put our focus on when we interact with families, right? Because we talk about transgression in the family, or you know, offenses committed in the family, in terms of、uh, moral or behavioral problems. So if one is too greedy, right? People would focus on materialistic gain over genuine love and care for the family, and we'll, you know, dive a little bit deeper on here because what do you mean by materialistic gain? Shouldn't we have, you know, money to feed ourselves, to have roof over our heads, and we need to clarify it to avoid misunderstanding. In this case, it calls without measure. That means. Extreme, no moderation. That means you only pursue it for the sake of it, rather than actually provide for your family or provide, you know,、um, for a basic well-being,、um, you know, to sustain the acceptable level of life.、Um, instead, it's it's something like you go and buy luxury stuff without、um, restraint, without understanding that this will affect your family's income, you know,、um, or you.、Um, Keep demanding a lot from your spouse, you know, without knowing, without understanding how hard the other half is earning their money. Say someone stay at home or something,、uh, as a stay at home mom or stay at home dad, or forming a family. What do you look for in your spouse? What do you look for among your、um, spouse? You look for money first, rather than actually understand how this person value is the same as yours. Because money, if you use the most、um, basic term, is a resource. It's a value. It's a value system. It values a lot, then you pay a lot more money. It's just that when the value of different, like thousands and millions of people, formulated into something, we call it a price list. So the fruit can be five dollars,、uh, you know, five dollars a kilo. Can be four thirty a kilo. Can be two thirty a kilo. It's valuable because it's rare, right? And these things are 
you know, constantly fluctuating. So you, if you base yourself, you know, base your relationship, base your, you know, um, the value of your relationship with your family member or with your future family member, like your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your spouse, or, you know, or your siblings, you know, based purely on money, right? I'm not saying that we shouldn't even think about managing finances. That's different. This is like just purely putting money above everything else or putting um, well, your own enjoyment above everything else. Um, then it's a problem. Hence transgression. This transgression is not meant like, it's not like someone else is trying to enforce a law on you. It's our, our own, how to say, behavior that is causing very negative effect in our life, right? So, so that's why we need to look into this, you know. Um, this is why we have this book talking about this, because the consequences of, you know, sinking in this bottomless hole of greed is you can't get out. You will always measure people against money, money, money. And if you only look for net worth, only look for that in other half, you know, and you're not understanding how their value align with yours or how you can communicate with that person. Do you guys really want the same thing in your life? If you just look for purely greed, you know, money without, you know, having the same value, or without compatible values, all you have left is just, you know, like a business. It becomes a business transaction. It's not even a family anymore. What makes family family is it goes beyond that. It has to be more genuine, close relationships with one another. You know, no matter what it is, and money is used to help that relationship blossom rather than becomes the end of that relationship. Of course, no one hates having more money, but greed in this term, right? We we don't we can go beyond that. Not just money; it also can means um, benefits. It can also means um, credits, right? So if expanding beyond this uh, literal sense. So greed, you can apply to, um, say, you know, in, in the public settings, you're only concerned for your own welfare at the expense of others. Look at COVID 2020. We have toilet hoarding, toilet paper hoarding incidents. I'm not sure in US if that happens. In Australia, it's a serious problem. Like everyone just hoard the toilet paper, even though they don't have to. They hoard like three, 10 boxes for a family of five. For what? How many how many wipes do you need for a for a for a session, right? And that's ridiculous. And and because they people think like, yeah, I need to store up for, you know, in, because we can't go out in shops. But what about other people? Right? And there are many ways to clean up yourself after yourself. You don't have to rely purely on toilet paper. And and that is a reflection of greed. So nature of greed means you only care about yourself with the other people. It's selfish. It's um it's a bottomless pit and if not used properly, it's like greed itself is a reflection of lack, right? If you want to go deeper, the lack, uh, lacking of something, hence you greed after them. If a person is content in abundance, they will not feel greedy over anything else. They're content. And the fun part about being content and abundance, have a mindset of abundance and actually content, like, you know, be grateful, be actually um, know where to stop, able to restrain your desires and able to, you know, live a little bit for other people, you know, and then expand your mindset is you actually get more from that, you know, the reward comes in different ma- different forms. And hence, not having greed does not mean that you're left without rewards, left without benefits, left without money. In fact, not having greed is the factor of getting more money, getting more reward, getting more kinds of benefit, relationship benefits. People really love and respect you because you genuinely care for others. And and also the you know monetary benefits because you no longer get bound by just purely money and profits you also understand what profits and money actually means for thousands of people, millions of people. So people want you to be on top of that position so you can benefit everyone else, right? Five dollars to him. And um, like Master Xing in the Fokuan San, 
he used that to contribute to the society in their own way. Master Shinkong used it to set up a school, set up the funds. See, he got a lot of money, but he didn't use it for himself. He get that level of joy that not just uh, even billionaire could not buy it. Because billionaire is asking him as well, like, you know, Chow yun Fat, the famous actor in Hong Kong, right? The, um, Lei Ka Seng, you know, in, in, in Hong Kong as well, because he was in Hong Kong when we were in Kong. Asking him, in, uh, talk with him. He has wealth in wisdom. Everyone wants what he, like he has what a lot of people don't have, even the billionaires. Peace of mind, happiness. His heart is at peace, it's firm. So greed is like you always hunger for something. You always want this, want that. So here comes the questions. Well, if without greed, how can a society progress? Because everything is to cater on your greed, right? Like in US, right? It's the, it's the biggest contributor of everything, innovation and stuff like that. Because of, and, and I think a lot of mindset of greed exported from there as well, because they have such a huge capacity to produce things, industry capacity. So they produce things that we don't even think we need. Like, oh, you don't need this. And then now I'm producing a product. I'm selling it to you so that you feel like lacking. And then you put out your hard earned money and then you buy it. And then this becomes a demand, right? Is smartphone really needed before you actually taste the convenience? No. It becomes a convenience and then it becomes a necessity. But if one day there is no smartphone at all, right? Just pure old fashioned phone, Nokia and stuff like that. Can we, can we say that the human civilization is gone? No, we can still survive. Of course, it's very inconvenient, right? It's, it's just a very different world, right? Even though it's just like 2009, not long ago, but, but we can understand that like this, this thing is like a bottomless pit. And if we do not have a little bit of reflection on it, pull ourselves back a little bit and give away what we have, we will no longer be free. We we'll always be hunger, desire. And remember greed, right? Is sibling or literally the twins of hatred. You don't get what you want, you hate. Whoever stops you from getting what you want, you hate them. Or you might not hate them, you feel annoyed and then it will escalate to that. And then it becomes a competition, a fight, a war of many fronts. You can co corporate level, can be personal level between siblings fighting over inheritance, you know, all this old story again and again and again and again. Or between, you know, um, heirs to the trust inheritance. Um, big corporation fighting over resources or countries fighting over, um, you know, either reputations, either power, either force. It can come in many forms or influence or, you know, might, you know, how strong, how more powerful you are over resources, oil, you know, all this important stuff. So, so this is, this is the very um, deep rooted problem, part, very part of human nature. And, it forms into this problem. So, but we don't want to go too far from that. It's going back to day to day in family settings. Like, what do we, um, why are we not, why do we encourage non greedy behavior if greed is seemingly giving us a lot of benefits, right? Like, you know, you, you have this sense of competition, your sense of improvements and growth. Isn't that greed? Isn't that driven by greed? I would say, Everyone wants to grow, everyone wants to expand, right? Everyone wants to improve. But the problem is if we only focus on the outside, like money, like cars, like, you know, um, net worth, and then the, um, how to say, um, face, you know, like reputation, fame, power. If we only focus only on, on the end of things, the end product, without understanding how do we gain this, it will only be devastating. It will only, um, how to say, dry out the source of your wealth in a sense. Those are what we call wealth. Have fame, have power, have have um, respect, which is in, convert into influence, have money, have, you know, um, high position, prestige, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those things are products. They are the end products of something. So we need to find out what makes one person having all this, what we call um, fortune, 
in our world. When we understand that the, the, the core of it, only then we will no longer get bound up by it. And then we no longer need to be slave towards our desire. Because we know the root of it, we were able to do, you know, we able to get to the source of these fortunes. So we no longer get greedy. We are able to restrain ourselves, we'll be at peace. We no longer, you know, want to hunger and all that. Instead, we put our focus on, you know, how to improve people's life, how to actually improve the mindset of people. How do you improve myself? And then how do I share my experience with people around me? How do I grow them? So non-greed does not mean non-growth. Always remember that. People think that non-greed means you sit in the mountain and then you don't do anything. Or you um, go back to the um, 17th, uh, 12th century and then just digging, uh, you know, digging the water from the well. Don't use technology, don't use anything because, you know, all these things will grow out of greed. No. If anything, we want to describe greed. Greed is against moderation. Everything that is too much is called greed, right? If you need to do something in order to, you know, sustain um, a lifestyle, but understanding that too much of it will harm others, then we understand we need to hold back. It's very hard to tell other people to you know, hold back. So I want to make it more concrete. So other than what we talk about, you know, the cases of greed can be like low compensation to other workers that work hard um, while holding the reward to ourselves, right? That mindset. Or, you know, taking over other people's credit where they're supposed to be due for it. Or, you know, um, well, this is a very big thing, like tax, you know, only benefiting the richer people because they have ability to play around with the trust and all that, while the poorer people will get disadvantage because they don't have that much funds. However, on the other hand, a sense of entitlement, even though you did nothing much, thinking that I should just get the rewards without actually reflecting on my ability to contribute, to improve um, the output of, like improve the quality of the of the company or, or myself. So those are all greed as well. You know, being lazy, not wanting to um, improve, always think that I should get this because I learned this in uni and you know I can use this mindset. So this is a balance. People already having a lot, want to hoard more for themselves. That's greed. People who are in the lack, all right, they um they want to improve their life and they are dissatisfied at how you know, the system was worked out in favor of people in power and in, in wealth. That's fair, but at the same time, it's not going to improve the system as well, 100%. Of course it will, like trade union, all that. But too much of that becomes, I can just sit and not doing anything. I don't need to do anything in order to earn it. No, we always should always earn our place in any organization, no matter how advantage or disadvantage you are. Um, and we also need to think of karma because this is the piece that is missing in a lot of understanding of the world, politics, religion, etc. Without words, without understanding karma, everything is hard to, we can't get a satisfying understanding because karma goes beyond what you see now, your current lifetime. Karma goes beyond that. It has a factor of past life. If one does not believe it, so be it. But it has to have something precedent in to us. Otherwise it's just not it's just not going to make it by saying that by chance I born into this rich family. By chance I born into this poor poor family. By chance I you can't just put it all by chance. It's a little bit too um how to say in the cloud, so to speak. In a little bit too how to say um a bit too uh, lazy, so to speak, and, and close-minded. So it has to have something happen before that sets the condition so differently for everyone else. Hence, everyone move on a different pace at the from different starting point. Some people already started with millions of inheritance. The question right now that makes everyone, sh we should pay attention is, how do we use this? Right, because I'm talking about these systematic issues, like you know the system is not fair, and then some people work so hard but get so little. Some people work little and then they get all the way to the top. 
yes, there are factors in, you know, like the system is created for them and then not for us, the poorer people or the disadvantaged people. Also, there's a factor of um, cause and effect, which people start at a different starting point. But I would say those are not the root of the problem, right? Because we talk about greed, we talk about people like on the both ends, they all like, you know, um, one is coveting other people's what they don't have. The other one is they want to hoard what they have, not sharing with other people. All these are negative. Those are behaviors. And these behaviors um, is going to only exacerbate or making it worse for the society because everyone is, you know, trying to, you know, have a peace. Rather than sharing it, it becomes something like, you know, I, I will do this at your expense, you know. And when the poorer people or people in disadvantaged level get to that rich level, they do the same thing. They, in the beginning, they might look like they're benefiting people. And then as it goes on to a few generations, if they're not taught well, or if the mindset is not correct, it will become the same thing again, right? So this cycle never ends, right? We can see so many revolution, so many uh, overthrown of the government and people from the bottom and rise up and go there. And then once they gain power, they gain wealth, and then they do the same thing again. They set the rules that affecting them, that, that benefits the people in power. So what I'm trying to say is, it might seem like a straightforward common sense because our mindset is, our, our sight is so narrow. All we can see is that little, you know, little piece of life we thought it's everything that's it but in fact the real solution or i would i would dare say the real how to say remedy to this how to say um an inevitable conflict is understand how do we use treat wealth right from different position from people who are in the bottomless rung to the top rung of the society class people at the top should always have the mindset of giving, especially um, you know the art of giving, because this will create a sense of gratitude and sense of um, satisfaction that even money cannot buy. Or I would argue, money allows you to do even more of that, maximizing the happiness. I think um, how has shared a very good story of me of someone who has millions, billions of dollars because they create a company, duty free shop. And um, yeah, Chuck Fenny, since we talk about the topic of greed, we're going a bit deep on this one, right? Chuck Fenny. So who's Chuck Fenny? Um, he's an American businessman and philanthropist. He born in 1931, just passed away this year, 2023, October 9th. So he's like 92 years old. He's the one that, um, you know, finally uh, he founded something called Duty Free Shoppers Group. So let me just share it. So Chuck Finney, can you see it? Chuck Finney? Yeah, I don't know where his picture is. Yeah, that's his picture. So what did he what he did is he gave away his um, wealth, total of eight billion in his lifetime, right? Ninety two years. Um, and the best part of it is he did not seek fame from this because some people just want to improve their profile and they give wealth, which is good still. But this one is pure. This is like he height his name from the donor groups because he genuinely wants to give and yeah secretly transfer entire share 38.75 percent share um, to the foundation all right um yeah like ability to give away so much power and so much wealth is something that is um never you know never grows not, never gets old in a lifetime, right? Like, Shaimuni Buddha gave away his immense wealth and power to continue and pursue in, in the truth. And he found a way for many people, and many people have succeeded under his teaching and still success many, many years later, including us, if we really understand what he's teaching. Um, who else? Chuck Finney and like some people in the great um, powerful 
position, they let go of their power. Like in China, yes. We have so much story of, you know, uh, kings, especially the one before the unification. Uh, it's very hard to find it after unification. It's very rare. Because that one, after unification, you will see a lot of them is killing each other to get thrown, and it gets ugly. Before unification, there are cases of people actually, you know, I would say the standard, their quality is much higher. Their character quality is way more pure because it's a small society back then. And, um, you know, there's no president like unification of China by Qing that actually use a brutal, ruthless method. So if someone like Zhou Wenwang, Zhou Gong, you know, we always love to say, when you sleep, you will see Zhou, uh, Master Zhou. So he's the one that founded the Confucian thought. There wasn't Confucian then, okay? That's the that's the mindset that forms, crystallized um, in Zhou Dynasty. And Confucius is just continuing the compilation. He didn't create anything. He just compiled what was good about the era. Humanistic, you know, benevolence and all that. So the whole point is he let, he's the one that, um, Mr. Um, Duke Zhou, he's the one that overthrown the um, previous dynasties. They were known to be oppressive and really tyrant, tyrannical. And then he, you know, because he become an interim king to help his cousin, his nephew, which is, which is in the next line in succession because he's still young. So he, he's trying to, you know, hold the situation for his nephew become until his nephew came of age, Zhou Chen Wang. So this um, Duke Zhou Zhou Gong, right, is doing his job and he could have taken the power and become his own king and get rid of his nephew, just like what we've seen later, right, in the dynasty. But he just let go of the power and let him become the king and he allowed you know, him to grow healthily in his own realm, become his own person, become his own um, leader without trying to control and puppeting and all that. So that in, in, the, in the eyes of a, such a huge lucrative um, offer, you know, he has a chance to overthrow and he has a chance to just become a king himself because he has respect in military and civil part of the affairs and the, the order or the vessels are very loyal to him, really look up to him. He could have done that. No one would say anything, but he respect, you know, the um, line of succession and he let his um, nephew to become the king as he's right. And he continued to, uh, how to say, to assist his um, now boss, his nephew, to do his job uh, without interfering. Uh, so that's, that's also giving, right? Giving of power and also not just giving of power, giving of wisdom and not allowing greed, right? Greed to take over. So if you look at the other side of the spectrum, like, because I like Chinese history, I talk a lot about this, um, three kingdoms, you know, Cao Cao, he's, um, instead of actually, um, actually pacifying and then really, you know, giving it back to the Han dynasty people, the king, so that, you know, everything's back to normal. He trying to um, duplicate his enemy's action with more sophistication, you know, the Dong Zhuo, to gain, to gain his power uh, over other warlords, you know, and he has that selfish mindset as well. So he did not let his greed, he did not overcome his greed. He allowed his power and influence rush to his head and hence create more instability that does not benefit a lot of people. It becomes a three kingdom. If he truly wants to, you know, like Duke Zhou to actually assist the king of Han to get back in order and also become a protector image, that a uh, protector role, actually protector role without trying to usurp the throne, then the situation is, it will be a bit more peaceful and easier to you reunify China in a much more peaceful settings. But um, that's history. So what I'm trying to say is greed, right, will beget greed. I'm using a real life example because some people don't take past life in factor. So if we talk about that, like tricking them, Cao Cao is doing that. And then his son, 
you know, because his father is still trying to maintain the facade of I'm a, I'm the um, minister of the Han court. I cannot be king myself. You will become usurping. So his son just read his mind and kind of understand his intention to be emperor. You know, he's just one step away. He's King Wei. So he's trying to establish the foundation for his son to be king, to be emperor. So he he took over the power and then become the emperor Wei. And then after a few more generations, because they're all short-lived, they die at 20, 30, very, very young. Their own kingdom get usurped by another person, Sima Yi, right? And, 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 and this is history. This is not like romance of the three kingdoms. It's actual history. He o- his power was usurped again by other people, right? I can use history because it's real life. It actually happens. No matter how many iterations, it actually happens. So I'm pretty sure everyone can agree with that. This is a sense of, this is how karma works, a karma that we can see, right? So his greed, he thought he can get it all, but all he exchanged is a platform for another person to do exactly the same thing to his own children. So Sumai took over his place and usurped the throne after he helped the kingdom to unify the whole China, in a sense. And then... You know, and then he he become another dynasty, another company leader, so to speak. And worst case is, people who do that does not have a good ending as well. So his own children, right? No more than two generations. I think after four generations, the eight princes, everyone is the same family. Sima, they all kill each other, murdering each other over the throne. So these are all karma. I'm 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 talking about very big famous story so that we can understand that so you will not get what you want in fact you get less from what you thought you get what you have if you use this logic of taking advantage of people when they're really in need of your help right on the other hand if people who actually understand you know actually help people genuinely and actually give away and without asking for anything in return they will get more and it, it, it just worked like that, you know, like cutting corners, trying to we'll put it in a smaller context, trying to cut corners in our work, trying to speed up the process, uh, you know, end up with more errors in our work. So we thought we can just gain, a, a you know, we can have an early day off and then end up more problem, more issues. And then um, and then end up having, having to stay back and et cetera, et cetera. So it, it costs our time, costs our money, costs our reputations. If we do it right, step by step, you know, take our time and understand why, what, go beyond from your duty. You know, don't don't be so um, short-sighted. You know, long-term and short-term. This is all about that. Greed is always short-term. They always think about this. Of course, we can talk about, you know, you want bigger things, so you need to be more far-sighted. But um, there are different levels of greed, right? Some people want the whole world. Some people just want a nice uh, little cottage. Some people want... A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Everyone wants different thing. Desire is different thing. Great is when you go too much from what you could, from what you have, right? And if you really want to grow your wealth and revenue and all that, you have to do it right. You have to make sure people actually got their benefits from your service. And then you actually have to make sure that you don't just do it for the sake of purely growing your books. You need to understand you need to provide something. Even some of them is um, not as profitable. You're actually servicing people. And that will come back to you in a good way. No matter how your current situation looks like. It's not wrong to manage and finance, but it's wrong when you only do that for that, to grow the book and not understanding the meaning of your profits towards your colleagues, your workers, your customers, your country. This is something needs to be there. It's a tool. This whole system is a tool. The mindset is why it should be there. And it starts in the family. Your family, everyone just talk about purely about money, talking about how do we get one up over other people. Or if the kids was being thought as, you know, you need to get what others have. If you don't have it, you need to take away from other people. You know, because, you know, this is how it works. Survival of the fetus, blah, 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 blah. What you will get is exactly like what the history has shown 
you know, what you get will not last long. All right, you might think you are powerful at the peak of the age. Let's not talk about after you die, what you have to face. But your current generations of people, you thought you left behind them a lot of wealth, you will lose away anyway. Either they don't know how to manage, they don't have the right mindset, they just use the money, you hard earn money to spend away in gambling. Anything can happen. And to reduce that, we need to understand giving is taking. You, the more you give, the more you get. The more you get, the more you gift. So this mindset is important because action of giving comes from the mindset of content, abundance. You have so much, that's what you want to give. You're so happy, that's what you want to share. You know, you're so you're so peaceful. That's why you attracted people to you and they are feeling at peace and happy to you. So reflection, meditation, those are very important as well to slow down that impulse and just see what are you doing are you chasing it like a we call it rat race you know running the meal and you know just to get you know another figures and then or you really reflect on you know what do i do what can i do to this book what do i leave behind and if it's just if your answer is just saying oh i want to uh marry into a rich household or i want to get uh you know a lot of money to buy my favorite cars and all that that's fine Everyone has their own level of desires, but we gotta have to go beyond that a little bit more. It's not um, how to say it's not gonna last, right? That fun, that thrill will go away, and you'll find out more people coming to you to because of your money rather than your character. You feel more lonely actually with even more wealth, even though you got so many socializing and all that. So you want. If you want genuine happiness, it has to be coming from the inside, not from the outside. And all this money, wealth, prestige, power, those are, it's not wrong to pursue them, but it's wrong to put them as the first. And you need to pursue the inner qualities. And inner qualities in Chinese we call the virtues, right? I don't want to make it more too stringent. Virtues means what kind of people you are. How do you treat people around you? Um, what do you prioritize in your life, right? What is your um, number one priority? And virtues is important to you know bring a company together, bring a group together, because you actually care for people. You actually uh, appreciate talent, appreciate competence. You actually put people in the right place. You actually resolve conflicts. You actually put in the effort in your job, in your duty. And take care of people around you as well. Take care of their needs. You grow the ability, right? That's why you perform very well because you're able to um, not focus only on your needs, selfish desire, which is greed. You focus on what they need. You know, you focus on what they actually want, and then you're able to create a solution, and then they will grow into business and stuff like that. And your business is not purely to chase the bottom line is actually servicing people. You get that joy from there. Of course, if you want to go further, look no further than Shaini Buddha. Look no further than the spiritual people like Master Ching Kong. Right? He, they let go of the pursuit of wealth. Right? And they focus on basically harnessing their inequalities, making it better and better and better. How do you do that? You have to let go of all these attachments to these desires and all that. However, it does not mean that you will not get any of this prestige fame or anything. This thing will come naturally, but your mindset is correct. So you are the driver of all this resource and you use it to influence more people with this kind of mindset. People will see, oh my God, you are very, how to say, you are very, you have high prestige. You're actually able to not getting it to your head and you're not getting greedy, you're not buying a lot of fancy you stuff for yourself you actually use it to help more people even though you live like a normal person you don't you know drastically improve your standard of living maybe a little bit for the whole group right like master Hai Xian, right uh, another monk who lived until 112 years old and you know he used his own two hands to create wealth basically he planted the land, the crops, and then he gave it away for free back in famine in China. He's a monk in China. And 
um, during the times of problems, he, you know, thousands of acres of land that he, you know, he opened, uh, he, um, he tilled with his two hands without machines, right? He gave it away to the comp- uh, government. He gave it away to people in need. And then he sell the rest to get revenue for the temple. And so all he did is just to make everyone's standard better. And all he did is maybe, you know, improve the, like his own mother, you know, he invited his own mother to his temple because no one else is taking care of her mom because his sibling passed away earlier than him. And his mom passed away. He only has, his um, economic situation was not good. He only gave him a very basic coffin, all right, but made of plywood, very, very crude. So it felt very um, sorry to his mom. So he's trying to uh, move her mom's remains into a better um, resting place, coffin. But of course, the story goes as just like Bodhidharma, when they open the coffin, it, there's only two, there's only one nails. So it's like Bodhidharma, we, we cannot guess, but it's very similar to the first patriarch of Zen Buddhism in China, you know, Zen, right? famous Chan. And when he passed away, people trying to, you know, um, people when he passed away, someone from the West walks um, from from the you know Middle East area trying to walk towards China, and then they see someone that looks like a Bodhidharma, which is an Indian um, back then, and he's like, I th- uh, he went past him. Maybe he doesn't know his death. He's like, oh, where are you going? And the Bodhidharma was like, I'm going towards West because my mission is done. I'm going back. So when he went back to China, that this um, traveling monk who passed by the Bodhidharma who was supposed to be dead already. And then we went back to Shaolin Temple or something. And then they, everyone was like, yeah, Bodhidharma, Master Bodhidharma has passed. And he's like, no, I just saw him passing by me. Um, he only wore one shoe, one straw slippers with another straw slippers hanging, dangling from this um, this uh, stick, this carrying. And everyone was like, oh no, maybe this is a Bodhisattva. And then they open up his coffin. There's only one um, straw shoes left. It's just trying to show that, you know, his mission is done and he's going back. So same, with, maybe the same for Master Hai, uh, uh, Hai Xian's mother, right? The whole point, however, I'm sorry, is he's used his money um, to do something that is, you know, for other people and not just for his own desires. All he had, and to do that, one must understand how much is enough, right? How much is enough, and to do that, you need to have that mindset of, you know, cause and effect. Of course, the inequality of the world cause and effect. Also, the uh, mindset, the virtue is the root of all fortunes, all kinds of fortunes. We call fortunes in terms of not just monetary, financial. We also talk about prestige, influence, etc. We pursue that, I pursue that sometimes, but when we get too much into it, we understand that, oh, all these worries, all these cravings and stuff is not going to get you anything, right? If you understand, if you understand um, changing destiny, which is the four lessons of Liao Fan, he's seeking wealth as well. He's seeking uh, Gong Ming, he's seeking the um, position in the governance, an uh, important position in governance, and he made it after a lot of hard work, 20 years of hard work, all right? He changed his way, he changed his mindset, all right, after being taught by um, Zen master Yun Gu. And, and even though he was calculated by the Oracle people very early on, but, and everything was accurate, like basically he's calculated every steps of his life is fixed exactly as calculated but he able to um, meet someone that changes course and then he understand that his own behavior is the one that's um, fixing him strangling him to this path you know suffocating him in this path so he's trying to change the course which is his virtues which is his behavior his character how he treat other people you know how he say things how he do things, how he think about things. If you put in modern term, his his um, quality, his um, emotional intelligence, his inter, uh, IQ, EQ, you know, his ability to um, 
be more caring. It's actually ability to uh, less be less debating, to be less um sharp in his words because he was very smart. Of course, he's smart, and he he made he made it to the examination, which is very competitive in China back then. But he's um how to say. Also, his desires, behaviors, lust, and all that. He's trying to rein it in, and he become more how to say reflective of his action, self-conscious. He's able to um, what do you do? And then he able to understand the, the the nuances. So something about this is is not black and white. He understand that what appears to be good is not necessarily good. It has to be um, serving. You know, we has to see the result in order to understand whether this action is good or not. How did he came to this, right? I don't think he just read the book and just say it like machine. He actually observe when he's trying to change his path. Like some people appears to doing good stuff, but when they do it, they bring it a heart of greed, a heart of hatred and ignorance. They, their intention is not pure. They trying to covet something, trying to get something, like fame or you know. Prestige of being a good person, rather than actually trying to help, trying to get things uh, solved to alleviate the suffering for other people, or provide service in our modern context. So, genuine, 真诚，情境平等，正确嘛，就是 genuine. You know, just be genuine is already a, a very big step forward. And be genuine means you need to allow yourself、uh, to be honest. About your attitudes, about your outlook, you understand that sometimes it's like that. You know, the card you dealt with is like that. You might not be able to get any further if you not changing the way you your heart works. You not changing your mindset, and that's when you start changing. Just like they all find, he's changing his bad behavior, his attitudes. The more he gets, the more humble he is. He's not getting allowing it to get to his head. You know, he's not allowing himself to get arrogant, because he work, he work his, his say on himself. Of course, he's still a very capable, smart people. He still have knowledge. We all should learn, continue learning, right? Knowledge and all that. I know we 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 learn pure land. We all talk about focus on, um, going to pure land, all that. That is important when you really really, feel like it's time, then you can. For for now, you still have to deal with different part of life. So there are different needs at different stage. Not everyone have a direct route. Even Master Hai Sen, he still need to deal with a lot of issues. But what he did is he focus on chanting Amitabha. He's not literate, but he's wise, right? He's not literate, but he's wise. Those are fortune as well. With wisdom, you can convert into many things, right? For him, he's he's only chanting Amitabha. But a lot of people find problems and ask him. He able to solve it without problem. How? Wisdom? Why? Because he's not cling. He's not greedy. He's not thinking thousands of thoughts in at one go, and wandering thoughts, uncontrolled thoughts, undisciplined thoughts. Right? If that's too high for you, because he's basically reaching the enlightenment level at the age of, while、well, Master Qingkong say twenty, thirty years old, basically the same level of Zen patriarch, Liu Zhu Huineng. For us, we can learn from Liao Fan. That that's more relatable. He talks about how he start to change his behavior, from because we talk about greed, right? We need to talk about why we greed and what's the futility of greed. We can convert the greed into something, and Delfan has his wish as well. He's not just not wanting anything. He wants a son, right? It's fair enough. He wants,、um, he wants his、um, job, career, to be good, great career, good career, good son, all right. And to do that, he has to work on himself, right? Something that we can relate now, as a especially as a lay Buddhist as well. And and what he said is, he only not only change his behavior. He 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 say the three ways of changing, right? Changing your attitude, which is your actual behavior. That's the that's the most、um, crude, very first level. You just don't do it. If you want to scold people, don't talk, right? But you're still angry inside. But that's first step, very important, right? You don't commit misconduct, or in all ways, sexual misconduct, or verbal misconduct, you know. And then you start from that to this understanding why we don't do this. Why is anger bad? Why is greed not helping you? 
right? Why do we need to be patient? Why do we need to work on ourselves? Remember, Buddhism or this teaching of virtues is not telling you not to pursue benefit. It's to not to stuck in that small benefit, xiao li, ying tou xiao li. In Chinese, it's very clear. It's like a, a benefit as small as a fly. You know, all these little things, petty, petty benefits. It's to pursue great benefits, boundless benefits, immeasurable benefits. Otherwise, why do we go to Pure Land? If there's no benefit, why do we go to Pure Land? Why do we want to work so hard? Why do we let go of all these pursuit that the worldly people think they have? Why, why does Master Ching let go of all this fame and wealth that he could have? Even the heavenly benefits that people offer to him. He could have all this, but he's letting it go because the huge benefit, the benefits that you cannot describe is in Pure Land. That's very big. That's our goal. But in our current life, what we can understand is if you want all this thing, you have to let go of, you know, your attachment on little things. You know, you don't want to get stuck in this and that. You want to understand what is the, what makes people able to hold that high position. What makes people to have a good descendant. First, you need to be good yourself. You need to be a good example. Children don't just born and then they become bad. It's because you neglect like a garden, right? You neglect it and it becomes bad. Of course, you say, oh, what if, you know, I have a bad son that born into my family. You can't. It's after, you know, you need to work a lot. Even though you have a good starting position, like a wealthy people, if you don't work on yourself, if you don't have a right mindset, you, you're going to waste it. That's why this is transgression easily committed in the family. If we focus only on petty stuff, the external stuff, without understanding where they came from. I'm not saying they are not supposed to be there. If you want to be prestigious, if you want to be famous, if you want to be respected, if you want to be wealthy, if you want to have um, positions, if you want to you know, have that level of confidence, self-respect, we should understand the cause of it. You'll be respected because you respect others. You're wealthy because you're willing to give, you're willing to share. People are willing to give you the path towards your wealth. Wealth is all about where you go, who you know, how you put, uh, how much you understand, get the information as quick as possible, act on it, right? Create a system, a structure, a product, and then they're able to sell it at the right time, right place. And without every, anyone's help, you can't get there. So you have to open up. It's, I'm still working on it, it's very hard. Also, like giving of wisdom, how do you know things clearly? Because you ask, you're willing to let go of your face and ask. There's some problem I also need to fix. Too much face. You need to ask. I have a colleague that just joined me one month and she taught me more than I could have learned in a year. Because the way she deals with things is she asks. She asks me so much question that I feel like I didn't actually look in my work properly, good enough. And that's why I feel like I'm cooped up because I didn't say anything properly. I didn't ask because I like my face. And because I like my face, I slow down a lot. Of course, I do like to find my own answers before I go and ask people. But just ask. And then also willing to share with other people. That's why I'm still able to help, seek help, able to grow. Because I'm willing to share. So these things are, you know, real. Real wealth. They're, they're generating knowledge, generating wealth. And then Buddhism as well. The more you share on this you know no matter how bad your way of expressing like you know i have like maybe i'm off the path or whatever you know but as long as you do it of course you will reflect i need to reflect on my quality of my preparation now i'm starting to make notes but um also i need to reflect on my inconsistency so all this thing it's fine like lao fan has to work this 10 years 20 years of course, Master Shinko hope that we can take a bit shorter than that because we already have all this. But everyone has a different ha habits. We gotta have the fix and has to rely on yourself. You need to ask for help, but it has to be coming from yourself. Um, and like back to the Alpha himself, right? He worked his way up there. He gained his, you know, his um, he he, he reduced his misbehavior and he increased his virtue with his wife. They're working together. And then they finally have a child. They're sub not supposed to have a child according to his original chest, you know, original strategy. 
original um, life path. But he changed his path that he got a son and a very good son. Um, very wise, very smart at a very young age. So he's very, very happy. And then he got all the way to become a mayor of, a, I think, Beijing or something. Very um, big city. Basically, he became mayor of New York. Right, mayor of California, like big governor, right, governor of California, secretary of state, something like that in U.S. Big, prestigious, respectable positions. So I'm not saying that we should not pursue that if one's goal is towards that, but it does not leave virtue behind. You do not do that. If one can say, what about these people? He's ruthless. He's um. He's decimating people's reputation. He's trying to step over other people. And then he go to the top like this. Of course, you can do that. But the consequences is going to be even more painful. right? If you can go to that high top level or rewards by being ruthless, by being... Uh, not just ruthless. By being... How do I say? By hurting people. By overstepping people. That's your past life's um, merit. And guess what? You get there because of your good deeds you've done in the past. And I've already mentioned all the good you did in the past just to accomplish, just to be destroyed by this bad that you did now. Bad as in you hurt people and all the actual hurt people, not trying to wake them up, but you actually hurt them, make them know where to go. And this contradiction is really sad because it end up worst in your uh, next life. And if people don't believe in this one, I, we can't do anything. We can only tell them the history. You know, like Cao Cao. Himself, he become a pig in the later dynasty. So when someone butchered a pig, I think there's a story. When the, when the farmer butchered a pig, when they open up the stomach, they see Cao Cao, the word, Chinese word Cao Cao, in there. And he's already been reincarnated as pig so many lifetimes. So that's the that's the horror part that we haven't we cannot see until, you know, maybe they show you a sign. So this is something we need to keep in mind. You know, you may not go all the way to the top, but if you do well, you will get rewarded in a different way. You have good family, you have good, you're not uh, hungry or something. You you enjoy love and care around pe people around you. You know, your ambition can be used in somewhere. Who says Buddhism is not ambitious? The ambition is not for themselves, right? Look at Bodhisattva. Are they not ambitious? They are. It's just they're not ambitioning, they're not coveting or they want they're not trying to gain something. They're trying to they're trying to build something because of their vast horizon. In Chinese we call Gerju. Their chest is huge. They see a huge sea, Pacific Ocean, where we only see a lake. Or some people only see a cup of water. Some people only see a a a, a how do I say a drop. They all they worry about is that one drop. And they forgot. They forgot about the water. They forgot about the seas. And 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 the more how to say, the more learned you are, the more ability able to you know, the more observant you are, the more uh, ability for you to pick up um, sharp things, important things in your life, and you will not get bound by your temporal inconvenience. You know, these people humiliate me. I confess I have the same problem. I, I don't like these people the way he says to me. But as long as you understand, I'm not trying to stuck in this small pond of water. I'm trying to go to the Pacific Ocean. That means no matter how hard it is, as long as it helps me going towards the ocean, I will take it. And I will let go of my face. I will let go of my pride. I will understand you know, to humble myself. And the more humble you are, the, able, the bigger your volume is you're able to take more and the more concentrate you are the more ability for you to improve yourself so those are what we can learn from don't be greedy um it's just it, it, it's, it's something we need to you know really look inside and understand like there's a reason why people are sitting up there there's a reason why we're here and if we want to improve our standing Right? We are not deterministic, remember. We're not learning that, oh, this is all fixed and set in stone. We shouldn't do anything and just sit there and, and say, oh. The Alphan himself has an error as well. He say, I thought we only can seek wealth and power and prestige. How can we um, 
I mean, sorry, I thought we can only seek to improve our moral and virtues, our character. How can we improve wealth and prestige and power like that? It's like Master Ingu say, the uh, Mencius did not say anything wrong. You men, you understand it wrong. If you understand yourself, if you understand how you behave and you manage to understand yourself, what you want, where you are, and how much adjustment you need to do in your behavior, naturally you're able to align yourself to the goal that you want to get to. And you no longer get bound by your um, um, ignorance. You know, again, you no longer get sidestepped by your ignorance. You're aware of what's going on. You understand where you are. When you deal with people, you understand where they came from because you are very um, observant. You're very, how to say, you're able to empathize with people, even though they are different, even though their behavior is not good. You're able to overlook that or understand that, but able to see something good in them, able to bring them to your sight. And that's how you grow your um, well, retinue. That's very medieval. That means you grow your influence and, and, and respect because you're actually respecting people. All right. And you actually humble yourself. You don't want to be um, all gung-ho for nothing. True strength is when you so speak softly, but able to, you know, be very clear in what you want. Not yelling over one another. You know, you, or able to be, um, let's say, treated badly, but able to still maintain a smile unmoved. Not true strength is not when you punch other people when they punch you. That's not enough. That's just retaliation. True strength is when you got punched, you're able to stand up, smile at them, tidy yourself up, and walk away. And that really scares them because people who bullies, they all trying to get reaction or fear from you. What you have instead is you smile. You understand that, and you understand that this is not going to hurt you at all, even though your bodily harm is there. Of course, get out of the way when the people are trying to punch you. Don't don't get punched. But um, the point is, even you got like hit, you got humiliated, or you perceive yourself to be humiliated. Maybe they just straightforward. You need to take their words. You need to take their meaning behind the words, right? Even Buddha say, rely on the meaning, not the words. And if you have the ability to cope with this and able to extract important information, and then able to learn, that takes a lot of humility and humbleness to take it in right it's very hard because it's hard that's why it's crucial that's why it's so hard for people to get to the top it's precious right and to get to the top what does it mean it means that you actually have a huge responsibility towards people that look up to you that's why they give you that power they give you that responsibility and if you have that and you only use that to satisfy your desires and egos of course, people will be disappointed or not disappointed. They, they will feel betrayed. And your mind and heart is all trapped by the outside. Think of the sea and the pond. You're stuck in the pond. Too comfortable. One day the pond dries up. You have nothing. Went to the sea, you understand the whole thing thoroughly. So you humble yourself further. Give yourself away in at service of other people. You don't allow yourself to sit on your raw rail on the throne and enjoy it. You actually work, you actually fight for it, you actually do your best. Um, good or bad, you do what you can, all right? And hopefully that you may set up an example for other people. So this is very, um, this is hard work. This is, this is not easy, this is hard work. If you want enjoyment, you want to relax, yeah, stay where you are and don't change. But, so what I'm trying to point out is greedy, Right, um, is not uh, not growing. You grow, and greedy is when you you lost the compass of where you're going, and you allow yourself to be indulging and not really living. You just you know enjoying. You just allowing pleasure to take over, and you're not focusing on um, you're not really put in thoughts into it. So I think that's it for today. Um, in conclusion, endless greed brings only more sufferings in long term, right? We do not get advantage by taking advantage of other people. Real advantage comes when we actually 
give advantage to other people, when we uh, convenience other people, when we actually allow them to grow, allow them to improve from our actions, from our examples, only then you actually gain the benefits of growth, benefits of you know gaining anything. Uh, so the art of giving overcomes the greed. Mindset of abundance and content overcomes the greed. People who are abundant, content, will not always in a state of agitation, greed. Even they have to deal with a task or you know carrying an organization or carrying a team to perform. They don't allow themselves to stuck in their personal glory or anything. They focus on how to carry everyone together towards success, to, towards growth. They don't allow themselves to be stuck in their personal desires, right? They took care of them. They, they, they put it in, in, in a nice, like they allowed themselves to um, have a moderate amount of enjoyment. They don't allow themselves to indulge. Always remember, greed is the matter of spectrum. If it's too much, it's greed, right? Too much liking is greed. Too much hating is hate, hatred. And and mindset of abundance and content is where you are, you do it with your 100%. You treat it respectfully. People around you, your current social cycles, your current job, your current place, right? It does not mean that you don't grow, you don't move on, but you treat it with respect. And you allow things to go and take place while you're fixing yourself earnestly. That's more important than uh, looking outwards and say, I want this, I want that. But then how do you get there, right? So set the right directions and also are able to improve yourself. A mind of abundance will attract more abundance, right? A mind of lack will attract more lack. So you reap what you sow. If you keep thinking, I don't have this, I don't have that, all you're going to get is even you have thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, you don't have this, you don't have that. You feel like, oh, you're poor. Or you feel like you're lacking A and B. So you're always in the agitation. That's greed. Right? Greed is always lacking. You lack, hence you greed. You no longer greed when you um, have abundance. Um, the last one is reflection and meditation. We should always reflect and slow down when we can. Have, take a walk. Have a talk with people around you. Connect with them. Don't stuck in your... Um, own bubble, think only about yourself, learn about the world, learn about how the world is, you know, what actually the world needs, and how you can contribute from where you are. Um, start from the family, what about your family members, what about your parents, right? Also, the way you choose your spouse, you only look at their salaries, or rather their quality of people, because those wealth or anything can grow or you can lost it. But what you cannot lost it is what's in your head, what's in your heart. If you have the right attitude, right mindset, you know, even you have problem, your weakness, even you have issues, crisis, you can overcome it. And wealth and prestige comes naturally. Even if it goes, you no longer get bound by it. You don't put your value on how much you earn. You put on value on how much you serve or how, how well you overcome crisis how much you're able to let go. If you're able to let go and still maintain the same mindset, not allowing yourself to be moved, congratulations, you're on a different level, um, different stage of your life. So thank you so much for listening. We'll end this here by dedication of merits and 10 times Amitofo. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and live the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Ami Tofo, 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 Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo, Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo, thank you everyone. Have a good night.